This is Piedmont Perspectives, a public affairs presentation of WTOB News. Good morning, I'm Leanne Petty, and I'm pleased to welcome my guest, who will be familiar to you if you've been in the triad as long as I have, Frank Mickens. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Leanne. This is amazing. Well, I'm so glad that we have gotten back together. We first met, it had to be around 2004, 2005, when I was working at a different radio station and you were wandering through as a guest and just kind of kept in touch over the years. When we first met, you were an anchor. No, I don't even think you were an anchor yet. Maybe a weekend anchor. Yeah, in uh, 04, I was a morning weekend anchor and reporter. At then. Channel 2 at in Channel Greensboro. Two, yeah. Now, first of all, is Greensboro your home? My home is Jackson, Mississippi. Oh, actually. okay. Yeah. Okay. But you wouldn't know it, would you? Because I've uh, You've been had here so for as long as here. I can mm-hmm. think of. So. Obviously, you consider your the triad your home because yeah, you moved away and now you're back. That's but true. I'm kind of getting ahead of the story. <laughs> but I invited you here this morning because since you came back to this area, I have just been following your story on social media, and it's a journey of faith. I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> and I thought I would let you tell the listeners your story. Oh, wow. If you want to start oh, before Channel 2, you could... I can give you as much as I, you can handle. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, we try to have themes for each year, and these come out of prayer, and my wife and I um, got leap year, and, and this was the year we took a big leap, so it all kind of worked together. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I mean, grew up in Jackson, Mississippi, went to Syracuse for college, did journalism there, um, and went back home to Jackson and worked in TV a couple of years. Then I came here. Mm-hmm. And true story, I pull up in the um, U-Haul with my dad and we're parked. And my dad says, we have family here. I'm like, what? He had never mentioned it. And lo and behold, I've got cousins all over the place. No here kidding. In the triad. Yes, ma'am. Wow. And then that's where the God story even gets crazier because, you know, I'm coming from Jackson. And, you know, that was a great little uh, incubator to have family here. And one of them turned out to be my pastor eventually. Mm-hmm. And uh, under his... Um, Guidance. I surrendered my life to the Lord in 2005, and around that time, entered into ministry. So a couple of years later, I was licensed as a minister, and always did evangelistic work. Um, so I was doing Channel Two mm-hmm. and reporting, and doing investigative reporting, and I was always about truth, truth, which is kind of my DNA. And uh, ended up doing the anchoring thing, the evening anchoring. But during that time, I was also doing neighborhood outreach events Mm -hmm. and um, preaching around town. And so there are going to be listeners that might remember me coming to their church and preaching on a Sunday morning or Mm -hmm. at a revival. And then we moved away and went to Indianapolis. And honestly, all of that kind of died down. I got so career focused. Uh, I was morning anchoring, so my my sleep was off and everything. Mm And I came home one day, Leanne, and then um, we were in our brand new home. And I said to my wife, I said, honey, do you feel like this is home? Which is ironic because you just asked about is Greensboro home. Mm-hmm. And she said, you know, no. And we had just built that house. It might have been a year old. And here we are saying we don't feel like it's home. And uh, two and a half years from that moment to now was the course of, uh, the Lord took us through of faith and hearing God's voice about why you were born and making decisions of sacrifice and all of that. And he made my life very uncomfortable in Indy mm. um, where there were people at my job that were working against me. Um, you know, um, I wasn't involved in ministry work for a long time, and that was not fulfilling. I was like, God, you know, I, I came here, and I asked you to show me where to get involved in, in the kingdom of God, and nothing was coming. And um, it came around where I started thinking, oh, wow, I know why this is uncomfortable, because, Lord, you're preparing me to go even higher in TV news. Okay. And got a new agent and did the whole New York thing, and I talked to a lot of different networks, and a lot of people were saying a lot of good things. And the entire time I was praying and asking God, okay, show us the door to go through, close every other door. Mm -hmm. And he ended up closing all of them. Wow. And that's when it was contract time. Yeah, you were on your way up. Yeah, absolutely, sure. You could visualize yourself, I'm sure, working for some big network. Certainly, yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I mean, those conversations were happening. I had one lady say to me with a network, it's not a matter of 
of uh, if you have the ability, it's a matter of timing, you know, when we have an opening. Mm -hmm. I had another network say it's not uh, whether you want to work for us, uh, whether we want you to work for us is if you want to work for for this network and, mm -hmm. and basically never heard from any of them again. Wow. And uh, so that's when I had the opportunity to resign in Indy and I, I was in prayer and my wife and I were praying and we were fasting and and I heard the Lord say to my heart, do not sign that contract. To the point where I felt like if I was to do it, I would have had to force my right hand to write my name. Wow. And I'm like, but God, I've got three kids. I've got a wife and my yeah, wife's I was a homeschool say, mom. You have children to worry what? about at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And they're young. I mean, how old are your kids, uh, My Frank? oldest is 11. So around this yeah. time, she was 10. I uh, had a 10, 8, and 6-year-old at the time. And I mean, so these are real practical questions. And when we had sold her, so we, just to kind of give you a little backstory that I skipped, we ended up selling that new home mm -hmm. within a year of that conversation. And we didn't know why. We just knew the Lord was saying, sell it. Don't get tied down. Again, we're and thinking it's network news. And your wife is all on board, too. She's not saying, Frank, you're yeah. crazy. <laughs> you're, you know, you're hearing things. This is not the right thing to do. Your wife totally supported you. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really interesting because when I left Indy, People are saying, well, Frank, do you know what you're going to do? I'm like, no. And I said, but one of the greatest things about this whole process is my wife and I have been on one accord. We've been united. Like, we're hearing the same things. Wow. Um, to the point, Leanne, where we would go and I'd say, okay, here's a question, honey. Let's take to God. And then we'd go and pray on our own. And then we'd come together and we would agree that we would share whatever the Lord put on our heart. And we do this about all kinds of things, like where to give money, how much to give. We do. And all... Every single time we come back, we hear the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did through this process. You know, she has her prayer life. I have mine. And then we have ours together. And, yeah, she was the whole time saying, yeah, Frank, I don't feel like, you know, I feel like the Lord's saying there's something. But then when I would say things like, well, I'm just going to, you know, pray that we're going to New York. That's where she would say, well, keep praying. Because she never felt peace about that part. Uh -huh. And she would just say, Frank, and that's been her thing. Just keep praying. Because she was like, I don't know. And uh, I was like, but that's where all the networks are, you know? Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't know. Um, so we sold that house. We, rent, we rented for a while, downsized, we're saving money. And then here we are at decision time. And I'm like, okay, I can't sign it. And um, it turned out to be a blessing because I asked for more time. And they said, well, we gave you as much time as we can give you. So we're just going to say we're parting ways. I'm like, okay, cool. And I had a buddy of mine send me a text message within a um, couple of weeks of me leaving and mm -hmm. saying goodbye. So now you have no and job. I have no job. I'm sitting at home and getting on my wife's nerves now. Like, <laughs> and this guy friend of mine, his name is Alan. Love Alan. He's from Kenya. And he had gotten laid off. Because mm -hmm. during this time, I was one of the few who were being offered renewal when a new company had come on. And they were laying off people at the station. Right. So some people might have thought, you're crazy. You got stability and they're asking for, they're getting you a raise. And I was like, but the Lord said no. And he texts me. He says, Frank, what do you think about doing some videos? And I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, what videos? What are you talking about? So we had lunch uh, and, and we talked and I said, okay, Alan, I'm going to pray about this. And the Lord just started telling me, Frank, take people with you on your faith journey. And so out of that, we did about 12 videos. People might have seen them on the uh, Faith Fire YouTube channel. If me just telling people, here are my questions I'm bringing to God because I, I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for purpose in all of this. And here is what he's taking me through in the word of God. And I just started taking people through this process of one step at a time with the Lord. Sometimes he doesn't give you the whole picture. Mm -hmm. You know, Abram, you know, leave and go. I'll show you later where you're going. Mm -hmm. and, you just have to have trust. But it's, yeah. I think it's hard for most of us to have that level <laughs> of trust. Whew. You know, you hear... If you grow up in any kind of church, you got to trust God, trust God, trust God. But you actually have done this. Yeah. And that's the great thing about your story. And that, yeah. And you trust him to the point of you know he's not going to let you down. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and there's doubt in there. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. But I think what yeah, I we're began. Human. Sure. Yeah. What I began to realize is the peace I have in obeying him is more important than my personal desires. And that's a process over years. So I'll give you an example. My wife, when she moved to the triad, she did that on faith. And she walked into North Carolina Central to audit a class and walked out with a full scholarship and acceptance after the deadline. And so God showed us his faithfulness 
throughout our marriage, throughout our lives together. Um, and that's just one example, you know, faith steps that we've taken. And so he built us up to this point. Mm-hmm. And so I don't like people to think, oh, well, you know, I wish I had faith like you. No, you know. It was we, over time. It's over time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. Because you know, how long have you been in broadcasting? Oh, gosh, 20 years. I think my first live shot was the year 2000. Okay. I was a junior in college. So a 20-year career, and you just walk away from that to do this. (laughs) Yeah, and you know, I don't think broadcasting is all gone. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's just going to look different. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, God has me invested in this vision that... I'll be broadcasting revival, broadcasting how God is moving in unusual ways. And I don't know how that's going to look, but I have been offered a radio program. Uh, So if someone wants to sponsor it, reach out. (laughs) That's Uh, fantastic. We're looking for sponsors because it does take real money. But yeah, broadcasting is something that's in me. And I think it's just going to take a little bit of a turn, you know, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Because you obviously have <laughs> that ability. You have a great gift, which Thank you, Lord. God has given you, but to use it in a different way. Mm-hmm. And so, Alan, you know, we're sitting at lunch and we do these videos mm-hmm. after this lunch meeting. And I just fall in love with that broadcasting thing. Now I'm doing it on YouTube and Facebook and mm-hmm. Twitter and Instagram. And I started falling in love with this little baby ministry God gave me. And then I started falling out of love with TV news, not to say TV news isn't good, but it just wasn't for me anymore. Mm -hmm. And I took this one last ditch, one week trip to New York and had all these interviews lined up. And I'm among the interviews was ABC News. I'm sitting there with the vice president and she's asking staff, like, who else can this guy meet with? I mean, I'm feeling the vibes. I'm like, wow, this would be great. Mm -hmm. Peter Jennings was one of my mentor or one of the people I looked up to. I was like, this would be great. And. You know, Leanne, to be honest, I got back home after that trip, after all these exciting meetings, and I spent a lot of good time with my sister up there. It felt like a great blast. And then I got back home, and I told my wife, like, no. Something still just didn't feel right. And I just said, I'm going to take this little baby ministry he's given me and steward that and see what happens. And that was called Faith Feed. And now we have Faith Fire Worldwide Revival Ministries, and we're preaching and and you're everywhere. Teaching you're and, on YouTube. Yeah. You're on Instagram. You're on Facebook. You're probably um, <laughs> on Twitter, too. <laughs> yeah, we are on Twitter, and um, we're doing, we're preaching at a farm in Pleasant Garden on Sunday. I saw <laughs> one of the videos the <laughs> yeah. other week, and I'm like, this is fantastic. It looks so Man. beautiful and peaceful out there because you're out there in God's creation. Mm-hmm. And and so we go where we're sent now. So where God opens the door, we pray and say, is this the door you want us to go through? And mm-hmm. he says, yes or no. And then we go. And so learning his voice, um, I'll never forget. I get a lot of dreams. I woke up one morning and I heard the Lord just say to me, and it was funny, Leanne, it's not like an audible voice, but I know it's him. like I wake up and it's like the first thing I heard that morning. Mm-hmm. He said, Frank, I'm enhancing your hearing. And he's and he has. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think all of us struggle with knowing if it's us or him or if even he's speaking at all. But I can tell you, sister, that once I took that leap, he has shown me he's going to preserve us. He's going to protect us. He's going to guide us. And he, and his voice is so much louder in my heart now than it ever has been to the point where I'm willing to do some wacko stuff. If I hear him <laughs> say, do it, I'm like, OK, like me wearing this United, United States flag mm-hmm. bandana. You know, he told me months ago, that's that's something I want you to do, and I want you to pray for this country. I've been praying for America mm-hmm. for a decade. People that go to church with me will know. Well, they'll tell you I've been at the altar crying tears mm-hmm. over this country for at least 10 years. And I uh, didn't know that he was building me up to carry this burden for people to know him, to know Christ, and know that, that he has freedom, true freedom. Yeah. Um, for us all. So that's what we do now. That's phenomenal. And just recently with the George Floyd protests that started in late May Mm -hmm. and everything in Greensboro, I see you out there praying with people Mm -hmm. during these protests, which sadly some of them did turn violent. And what what was going through your head at that time? Mm. That morning after, so this would have been the Monday morning after that weekend, my wife and I were praying and she says, Frank, I feel like the Lord wants us to go down there, downtown, where all this stuff had been smashed up. And I'm like, no way. 
<laughs> she was like, she just gives me that look. And I'm like, okay, let's pray about it. And then I was like, yeah, I think you're on to something. So we go down there and we were in, just going to show our kids, like teach our kids, like mm-hmm. um, this is not what you do to make a point. And this comes out of people's pain. This comes out of people's bitterness. This comes from people not knowing the love of Christ. And, and um, um, a reporter from Fox 8 <laughs> was, I guess, catching view of us um, talking and praying with people. And he came up and asked if I would mind. And as a News 2 guy, I was like, I don't know. And I said, <laughs> OK, well, you know, Lord, you know, I'm not at News 2 anymore. I, I'll tell people, you know, what you're saying to me. And so I did that interview. And and what was going through my mind, honestly, Leanne, Leanne is the same thing that's going through my mind now. And that is this country needs Christ. And we need unity. And really the only unity that is going to really hold us together is, is faith. Mm-hmm. Um, and so out of that, um, we're doing prayer every Friday at noon at the governmental plaza in Greensboro. And we're praying for the country, we're praying for revival, we're praying for people to turn to the Lord. And, you know, we don't debate. We just pray. We don't march. We just pray. We don't point fingers. We just pray. We don't look down at people. We just pray. We turn our attention to him. And, you know, it's a burden I carry. Um, We're divided in a lot of ways. So the race thing is being exposed afresh. Mm -hmm. But there's the political division. There's the gender division. There's the uh, division around sexuality. There's the division around you name it. Yeah. There's the division around wearing masks or not. Right. Um, And, you know. I think that if we were to turn our heart toward God and say, you know what, God, you're not pleased with this. Turn our hearts like yours, that we'll see real change in these these areas that we're seeing the fires and the fighting and the division. But um, if we try to do it in our own strength, we're going to come up short. I really believe that. And I'm Mm -hmm. not trying to come across as a Debbie Downer because I'm a positive person. I believe God is doing it. I think he's starting it now. I mm-hmm. think his heart's beating for unity and unifying. But I just want to curse people. You know, if you're a praying person, you know, pray for unity. Pray for God to show up in our civic conversations, in our educational conversations, healthcare conversations, mm-hmm. political conversations, and let the kingdom of God be where we put our energy. Um, and not everyone's a citizen of the kingdom of God. That's another thing to pray about. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a believer in Christ, you know, he's the way, the truth and the life is what he says. And so we should pray about those things. Like, where do I fit into that? Um, but as you can see, like, these are the things that I couldn't say on channel two that for years I wanted to say, and now God has put me in a position to say it. So, yeah, that's good for you. Mm -hmm. So everything kind of has worked out to this point. I wanted to get your opinion about a conversation that I had with a friend of mine that I used to work with in in radio, and I had not seen her for literally years, although we do keep in touch on Facebook and that sort of thing. And she unfortunately lost her job through downsizing right Mm. shortly after COVID hit in mid-March. And we were on the phone, and she also is a person of faith. And she thinks that God somehow sent coronavirus— you know, and she said, as crazy as this sounds, you know, this is her words. And she says, God wants us to listen. He's trying to tell us something. And she's like, I'm worried but that people are not listening. Because she said, you remember at the very beginning when we all stayed home and the air cleared up and everything was calm and you could hear the birds singing and people noticed how windy it got because they were they were calling into Tim Buckley over at News 2 going, Tim, why is it so windy? He's like, really? It hasn't been any more windy. You're just noticing it. Mm. My friend felt like God needed us to be quiet mm. so that we could hear him like you were mm-hmm. talking about. Yeah. What, what do you think about that? Uh, Did, is she onto something here? I wholeheartedly agree with your friend. Um, I mean, searching the scriptures, what you'll find is God is a God of correction. And he knows our hearts um, are desperately wicked. That's what the Bible says. Mm-hmm. So, like, if, if left to our own devices, the earth would be worse off if God doesn't intervene sometimes. And so what people like to say is, well, how could a God of love do this? Well, Think about if your own child is heading in a wayward direction and you know if they keep going that direction, they're going to die. And let's say they're drinking and driving. Mm -hmm. Well, you're probably going to take the keys. 
And if that doesn't work, then you're probably going to figure out something else. And if that doesn't work, you get more drastic. And so we know that at the same time, God is merciful, but he also is a God of justice. And so what he does is he allows things to happen to get our attention. And if you search the Old Testament, you know, Israel was People don't like to talk about this, or maybe they don't even know. Israel was sacrificing babies. Mm -hmm. Israel was having orgies at temples and worshiping these other gods. And God, for generations, would have mercy on them. But then he would send the Assyrians, and the Assyrians would show up, and they're killing people. And they're oppressing Israel, and they are, I mean, it's hard stuff because overall God knew that if they were left to their own devices, they'd get so far away from him that there was no return. And that's a hard truth. Um, and, and I'm not saying this that, that I don't want anyone to walk away what I'm saying to think that I'm saying if someone is passing your family or is sick in your family that mm-hmm. God's cursed them. That's not what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is he allows Satan, because Satan is the one that does this stuff. He allows Satan, we know this from Job, he allows Satan to do certain things And in this case, I believe that he allowed this because he's trying to get the world's attention, that we have stepped so far out of bounds. The referee is blowing the whistle and saying, "Okay, get back in bounds, get back in bounds. And the glory in all of this is, and I did a post on this on my Facebook page, coronavirus is 99.9 percent survivable. Hmm. So, yes, a lot of people have died. But if you take into account all the people who have been tested and all the people who have gone to the hospital and then you look at the number of people who have died, It's fewer than 1%. So Mm -hmm. even in this horrible scenario we're in where things have been shut down, we felt isolated, people are dealing with anxiety now, and it's still not nearly as bad as it could be. Mm -hmm. And God is showing us, I really believe, that nothing is stable in this life except what he does. So our economic system is not stable without him. Our family life, you know, all of the things that we hold dear, do they really matter? Mm -hmm. And he's saying come back to me. I'm really the only place where life resides. I'm really the only place where anything matters of of everlasting value. And so, yeah, it's a time that I think your friend is recognizing. And the Spirit is saying this, Holy Spirit is saying this to people all over. Everyone that I come across is asking these questions. Like, Frank, do you think? Yeah. And Mm -hmm. people are now hearing Mm -hmm. What the Spirit is saying. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I've learned I can do without a lot of material things. It's really interesting <laughs> what you learn that you don't need. It's like yep. when we were shopping uh, you know, for groceries online, we p- p- uh, placed the order online. We actually wound up spending less because you're not going through the store going, oh, I need that, and I need that, and I need that. No, you don't need that. So we're actually spending less. Mm. It's mm. this balancing act like you just said. Sure. And everything is kind of evening out. And I've also had friends that say, well, one thing about this pandemic, it has shown you who the jerks are and who the good people are. Mm, wow. And it really has. It seems like you talk about division, but the good people mm. have risen to the top and pulled together. And a lot of good has happened. Yeah. And I try to my best to focus on the good. You know, we all know that as humans, we tend to go negative. Because people always talk about in the news, and I do the news, and it's like, oh, I go home at the end of the day, and it's like, I feel like I've been beaten up. And you just have to sit outside and listen to the birds and find that sail off moment. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think what you're saying, you're recognizing, is what the Bible teaches that if we love this world, that's not good. Um, the Bible talks about how we should take no thought for our lives. You know, book of revelation talks about how the people that the Lord is looking for people that love, not their lives, even unto death. And some of that stuff sounds harsh, but what it is, is he really is delineating between what's good and what's bad. And what we forget is this world that we live in, that we can touch and smell and taste and all of that. It's a fallen world. It's not Eden. It's all been touched by sin. And so God has all the good stuff where he is. And when we surrender ourselves to his will and we're willing to give up all this other stuff, I'm thinking about where Jesus talked to the young rich man and the young rich man said, I did all these great things. Now, what else do I need to know to inherit the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus says, take all of your goods and sell them. And 
what he basically was exposing there was that this man, he had done all these great things. He loved his neighbor. He, he was doing all the right stuff, but he still loved his things mm-hmm. more than he loved God. So God is judging all the idols in the world. He's judging all the things, my dog, my wife, my time, my career. That's what he had to do with me. He, he spoke to me one time. He said, Frank, during all that, uh, I guess, formative time frame, he said, Frank, you have made money your idol. And I was like, cool. I'll walk away from it, God, because I know. And, and he had to break me of that before he could enhance my hearing, before he could give mm-hmm. me the call on my life, before he could start showing me why I was born. I had to kill my plans. And once I did that, and I was willing to say, whatever you want, Lord, he showed up in such a mighty way. Um, and so it's a gift, this, this adventure we're on, you know, where nothing matters except Christ. Yeah. One of my favorite videos that you did, and I reposted this on my Facebook page, was, I think it's called, Who Am I? And it's just like oh. three and a half minutes, and you're talking about who God wants you to be. And to me, that was just the most powerful three and a half minutes. And uh, if anybody follows me on Facebook or you follow Frank, either one, I encourage you just to listen to that because it was it just that spoke yeah. to me for some reason. And mm-hmm. it's not about who you think you are or who anybody else thinks you are. Yes, ma'am. Um, it's who God thinks yeah. you are. And I don't know if you saw this, but um, so we had the earthquake. Yes. That morning before the quake, and I've posted the pictures online so people can, you know, see for themselves. The Lord had me researching earthquakes before the quake happened. No kidding. 20 minutes before the quake happened, I ended my notes and I use Google Keep. So it has a timestamp. And so he sent me to a scripture. It's Matthew twenty seven fifty one, And I think this little passage describes what God is doing. So there was an earthquake when Jesus died on the cross. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that people who were dead or asleep is the word, they rose and then they went into the city and showed themselves to people. And I think that's what God is doing. I think spiritually speaking, he is shaking the foundations of what we hold dear. So they will wake up out of this slumber we've been in, drunken with the things that we like to do, the things we like to buy, and awakening us to the resurrection power in us. So that we can tell others and they can see the new life in us and they'll witness the power of God through us. So the reason why I ended up at Matthew 27, 51 is because it was a 5.1 earthquake. And we were on our way to church that morning. I said, honey, I'm thinking Isaiah 51. Like, what is God saying? And she says, Frank, I'm right here. Let me read this. And I was like, wow, there was an earthquake and people rose and awakened. That's what he's saying to people of faith. Wake up to what God has inside of you so that you can be useful to bring other people into the family of God. Your ministry is Faith Fire Worldwide Revival Ministries. You are on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, Instagram, YouTube, as we we mentioned before. And Uh, you also have uh, the hold the church services out in uh, in Pleasant Garden. And let's not forget every Friday at noon in Governmental Plaza, downtown Greensboro. Yes, ma'am. Your prayer. I, we're out of time. I could talk to you all day, Frank. I really appreciate it. If people want to know more, how do mm-hmm. they find you on these social media platforms? Sure. Faithfireworldwide.com is the website. So that's a good place to start because we have links to all of our other social media there. Okay. If you search Faith Fire on Twitter, if you search Faith Fire Worldwide on YouTube, if you search Faith Fire Now on, um, actually it's Faith Fire Now on Twitter, Faith Fire Worldwide on Instagram. Um, you'll find us. We're e- we're pretty easy to find, but I also have a um, Frank Mickens page mm-hmm. on all of those as well. So you can just search my name. Um, I always say Mickens is like Dickens with an M. Okay, and that's where people can find us. Thank you so much. This is such an inspirational story, <laughs> and you. I hope that uh, you will come back. I wish you all the luck in the world and, and blessings for what you're doing because uh, you're touching a lot of people. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Leanne, for the opportunity and the honor to be here. My guest this morning has been Frank Mickens, former news anchor with WFMY News 2 in Greensboro, now founder of Faith Fire Worldwide Revival Ministries. For WTOV, I'm Leanne Petty. You've been listening to Piedmont Perspectives, a public affairs presentation of WTOB News. Listen to this and other programs on our website at WTOB980.com.